Right guys, so we have seen how we did the wall in the previous video and now we've, we'll be focusing here on the middle part of the painting. So using the brush, I'm just trying to make sure we have all these different blue tones as this part of the wall here is actually um, blue. It is the same as the blue wall on top. So using different intensities of blue, like different kinds of tones and different kinds of uh, blues and different kinds of uh, chroma or intensity for the blue, that will help us to have more variations in this, this part of the wall as well. So we can use like cerulean blue, we can mix that sky blue or cerulean blue with the dark blue or ultramarine. As you can see right now, we have that light blue in the middle, we have some dark blues on the right, and mixing these different aerials uh, with different kinds of brush strokes will give us will give us all these you know different kinds of uh, blues that you're seeing right now. So we have those light blue areas, we have those darker blue areas that is closer to you know the the, the ultramarine, and then we are we have some like light blues. So again, using different kinds of uh, brush techniques like drier brush or wetter brush, that can also help us to vary and change this part of the um, wall. So just trying to touch up this part of the painting, those shadows, um, using my brush to kind of like add in more. So we can continue on with this part of the um, wall. So using that small little brush, I'm just trying to make sure that we have all these like light blues and dark blues and that will give us, you know, all these kinds of uh, blues. And again, just trying to make sure that they are blended together and we have all these, you know, different um, blues and different ultramarines and um, light blues and dark blues. And again, using my brush to kind of like make sure we have, um, you know, um, some light blues on the right hand side. And um, the part that is near to the dark on the left hand side is now a little bit darker than the rest. So just trying to use the brush to kind of like touch up on the shadows on the right hand side. Okay, so we have this dark brown for the shadows and using my brush just trying to um, show that we have this dark blue for the line that was left white and so using my fingers just trying to make sure that we have all these textures. So again using all these techniques and different kinds of uh, brush techniques and different kinds of blues, we can see that we have this um, very nice texture that is being depicted right here because of all these um, different techniques that are used. So again, don't use the same color and the same technique throughout the entire area. And that will give us many interesting um, kind of results. So I use different dark hues to paint the items here. Right, so we have this container which is on the left hand side of the man, which is to our right. So we have this um, dark um, area of the container and using the brush just trying to depict this part very carefully. So again, use um, other colors for the dark areas, not just black. And you can see here there's a subtly um, reddish kind of tone for this dark area. Using my small little brush, I'm just trying to make sure that we have these browns and we have all these, you know, different colors and different strokes that make up, um, you know, this side of the container. So a very interesting way to depict um, all these things is to add different colors to the darks and that will give us very nice kind of uh, results in terms of colors as well. So using that brush, I'm just trying to make sure that we have this grey tone um, on top. All right, so we can mix the grey with some browns and that will give us, you know, all these kinds of uh, greyish blues and um, this grey right here again you can see that we have a changing kind of a tone we have a changing kind of a hue you know in terms of blues and then we go to the browns and so within that same area again you can see i'm actually using all these different colors and different tones to depict this area so in the, using the brush i'm just trying to depict some of the items here located um, in this part so I'm not really sure what they are, but um, they look like some beads to me, but of course some kind of ornaments, there can be some ornaments and some items there. So there's a lot of dark tones here and I'm using my brush to kind of like add the 
um, kind of different dark tones like we have blues, we have um, yellows, we have orange, we have browns. So all these things actually make up um, what we are seeing right now. We have some of those beads. Just trying to make sure that we have all these different kinds of uh, things that we see there. And in the middle part of that part um, is actually very bright, so it is being left white. So right now moving on to the painting of the metal tint on the bottom part. So again using some orange, some yellows and some um, grayish tones and some browns, I'm actually depicting this part of the tin and again seeing those reflections on the metal tin in the middle part which is done by a very light yellow combined with the silver or grey. So using my um, brush and just trying to make sure we have all these you know items that are being done. Again, painting in the darker areas first by using different kinds of dark blue for those items. Right, so we are now moving on to the floor and I used a large brush and painted a pale greenish brown for the floor. So we have um, this, you know, um, light kind of uh, yellowish tone right here, but I'm going to use some um, greenish kind of tone as well. Um, to depict this floor. So this floor right here is actually pretty um, interesting because we um, will see different textures but of course um, we will first paint the, the base layer first before adding the different textures and again we have um, this very very um, light areas that is depicted by the sunlight. Right so right now I'm actually using some of the brush to um, paint the floor right now. And so you can see there's a yellowish kind of tone there. And for watercolor, it's really interesting when we um, try to depict the floor area. And um, you know, right here we have all these different tiles. And so I left white certain areas to show the separation between the tiles and the floor. But um, to show the um, differences and to show the separations of the different parts of the floor. So they're not necessary tiles, but you can see I left white certain areas to show those, you know, like patterns on the floor and using this grayish, uh, bluish and also a little bit of yellowish kind of tone. You can see I'm actually using a very complex kind of gray. It's a very subtle, but it is a little bit to the greenish side. It is a little bit also to the yellowish side. So that is how I actually used all these different subtle colors to help me to get all these very very nice kind of greys and browns and um, floor textures and so on and so forth that actually helps me to um, have all these colors painted. So I left out certain areas to show the tile so we have this um, you know areas that are um, left white right so later on we'll be adding on um, to those areas. Right, so th it doesn't matter if you have um, if it doesn't look complete right now because later on we can still touch up and we can still paint um, a lot of things right there. So using my brush just trying to add those greenish tones at the top and some browns and using my um, brush just trying to make sure we have all these you know different greys and different kinds of blues and you know um, again using that large brush to help me to paint all these different areas and as you can see right now there are some greyish some bluish gray, some um, yellowish grays, and all these brownish grays and greenish grays, and all these very nice grays are actually forming um, this ground area. So right now, I'm just trying to touch up on those areas that were left white, and you can see right now we have that distinct line. But again, it doesn't matter because we can use the brush to kind of like make it look more lifelike as we continue on. So I made depths to show textures when the floor is semi-wet. So right now the floor is almost dry but it is still wet. So using the brush, I just added and I just dabbed all these different you know, patterns on the wall so that um, it is a little bit like the wet and wet technique. So the wet kind of paint will actually spread out a little bit. You know, those darker blue kind of uh, um, brush strokes on the wall, uh, on the floor right now. And you can see that we have all these you know different kinds of uh, blues and they are now being spread out because of the um, wetness of the floor and um, just trying to make sure that we have all these you know different um, darker tones and you know greenish kind of uh, grays that are actually on the floor right now and they're being spread out and just make sure that we have all these you know different sizes of depths and you can see that you know we have all these 
um, different kinds of strokes and um, patterns that you're seeing right now. So this to add more textures to the floor that would otherwise look too smooth and too clean without all these kinds of patterns that are now being added. So using my brush, I'm just trying to add more of those um, strokes and um, darker kind of strokes on the um, covering of the drain right there on the right hand side of the floor. So we have these darker strokes that add more textures to show the kind of like metal um, drain cover, um, kind of like manhole cover on, on the floor and um, we see that you know with those patterns it actually turns out to be more lifelike and more realistic. So using my brush I'm just trying to um, cover all these you know the entire floor with all these different patterns and these patterns can help us to you know um, see that there's more textures there's more things going on on the floor it's not just a completely smooth kind of a floor as it will look very incomplete again repeating the same methods on all these different parts of the floor and using the browns and the um, grays and the greenish kind of uh, tones you know actually added all these different kinds of uh, depths and all these different kinds of you know um, formations on the floor so just trying to make sure that the shadow here is being depicted in a very realistic way and moving on to the painting of this area which is the man's feet so just adding more brown tones and more dark tones here and just trying to make sure that everything is well blended and you can see how I actually control the watercolor able to make it look very lifelike and realistic and just trying to make sure that we have all these you know different browns and different um, dark blues and all these blues are actually helping us to have a nice shadow so use the small brush here to paint the shoes Right, so using that small little brush, I'm just trying to create all these dark, all these blue tones using that cerulean blue, which is a sky blue, and just leaving white for those openings on the shoe, and just trying to uh, make sure that we have a good control of the small brush, and trying to make sure that we have, you know, all these um, very nice kind of blues that form the upper part of the shoes, and just trying to. Um, make sure that we have this entire area that is being covered by this dark blue um, tone at the bottom part which is again blended with that light blue tone on top right so um, this kind of shoe can be found in many parts of the world in the place that I live I can also see people wearing this shoe and this kind of shoe is actually consisting of all these openings at the top and it is almost like a sandal but it is like a kind of slipper and it is round at the front so we have all these you know um, different openings and the top part is blue and the bottom part is pink which we which we'll see um, later on as we continue to paint this shoe right here and so using that small little brush just trying to make sure that we have all these like light blues and trying to depict all these um, different kinds of uh, perforations on the shoe and again you can see that the kind of a tone for the blue is actually changing so with some parts darker and some parts lighter and that will give us a very nice um, visual result when when we actually look at it right, so we have all these you know different things that we see and using that brush just trying to make sure that we have this darker blue on um, at the bottom so um, we'll just continue with the painting of this shoe and you can see right there I'm actually actually covering most part of the shoe with that blue tone again trying to form those shadows and now using the pink to kind of like make sure we have all these pink tones at the back um, where you actually put your feet in that is consisting of all these very nice pink tones all right so now moving on to the rest of the shadows and all these you know um, darker blues and um, we have all these shadows that are a little bit darker as compared to the rest of the shadow because um, it is formed very near to the item itself and so we have all these strong shadows that are formed so using my brush just trying to make sure that the the place where the floor and the wall actually intersect is consisting of this very nice kind of shadows and lines and patterns and just trying to add more details on to the 
pattern onto the shadows that is already dry. And using a small brush and brown hues, I'm actually painting the feet right now. Right, so using a small brush, just trying to create all these different tones of brown. So we have like dark browns, we have like light browns. And just trying to um, make sure that we have all these light brown tones and um, just trying to make sure that we have, again, um, the different parts for the um, feet and for the, you know, the, the black parts and the the darker parts, the shadow parts, and of course the lighter parts. So using my brush, I'm just trying to make sure that we have all these things that um, make up the feet right here. And you can see right there that it is a little bit more tedious to paint the toes because it is kind of like bent in a kind of a awkward kind of a position. But um, we can see that I'm just slowly trying to depict all these toes in the most realistic and accurate manner possible. So using my brush, I'm just trying to use all these different kinds of um, browns to, you know, depict all these um, areas with browns and um, dark browns and light browns. And this is something indeed um, very nice to look at because we can see all these different browns that are forming this very nice skin tone on the man's feet. Right, so we need to have a little bit more patience when we actually see this entire thing um, coming to life because we have all these, you know, different kinds of browns and different kinds of uh, light browns and we use burnt sienna to paint, um, to, to for the light brown here and right now you can see, you are seeing that I'm actually leaving white some of the toenails which will be painted on later and once this part is dry, we'll be able to paint in those toenails. So now you're seeing the toe that is formed and um, it's really very um, kind of like realistic. We have all these, you know, different kinds of browns and different kinds of, you know, greys and light browns and dark browns. So using my small little brush, just trying to add in the toenails, which consists of a very light brown and it is separate from the rest of the flesh on the foot. Right, so that's how we actually do the skin tone for the feet. Um, and of course, um, using my brush right now to kind of like touch up on the shadows, just making sure that everything is being blended together and um, just trying to make sure that we have all these different kinds of tones and um, for, the, for the shadows and the foot and so on and so forth. Right, so now um, we are moving on to the painting of the trousers or the pants. So I use a light orange tone to paint the pants and again using different orange tones and some lighter parts and darker parts that will help us to depict also the sunlight that is shining on to the man's um, trousers. Right, so we have all these, you know, different kinds of orange and browns and um, so on and so forth and you can see that um, the the part that is at the bottom is actually darker than the top because the top is exposed to the sunlight which you are seeing right now using a lighter kind of orange orange brown kind of tone to depict the top so using my small uh, my, my brush just trying to um, show that we have this brown and um, this brown is actually to show the shadow of the pork of the pocket so um, there's some things on his pocket right there and uh, this is shown by the darker tone of brown that you're seeing right now at the top of the pants so i'm just trying to make sure that we have all these you know different kinds of uh, brown different kinds of light browns and dark browns that are being depicted on um, the man's uh, pants and we want to make sure that we have all these colors that are added in in the right place just making sure that we are avoiding the rest of the areas like the hand and you know the other areas and using my brush I'm just trying to um, depict some of the shadows that is cast by the hand itself right so we can use a little bit of blues like you know dark blues to show some of the contrasting um, temperatures within the same area so a little bit of light blue uh, of blue tint there 
um, near to the hands and now we are trying to make sure that we have this area that is um, the top of the trousers or the pants being done with the brush and just trying to blend all these different parts together using my brush and there's like orange there's like you know um brown and there's all these you know shadows and there's these blue strokes that is used to depict the folds of the men's trousers and the pants and just trying to make sure that we have all these um different kinds of folds that are being depicted using those um dark strokes using those black strokes right so just trying to make sure that we have all these different kinds of dark strokes that is used to depict those folds and the shadow areas of the pants Right, so now moving on to the depicting the de depicting of this uh, middle part right here. Again, we see some shadows because the shadow is being cast by the man's hands. And I'm just using this small brush to help me with some of these darker areas. Right, so we have the use of this small brush which is very helpful when it comes to painting those small little areas because they are kind of like you know very hard to reach using that larger brush and so i'm using this small brush to help me to reach into all these you know very small areas and we we are using some lines and different tones of browns and different light browns and dark browns to depict the shadow that is being cast onto the pants by the man's hand on the right hand side so using this small little brush i'm just trying to make sure that um, we have all these you know shadows and all these nice shapes and this very um, nice orange that is combined with the dark brown in the middle part and so we can combine all these different tones and different colors together and that will also give us a very nice effect when we have all these you know combinations and using the brush to kind of like help me with um, some of the folds that are also dark in color so right now we have some of the folds of the uh, on the man's um, trousers or pants and again we can see those shadows that are being cast onto the area that is left white and that area is left white because it is underneath that sunlight and so we can see this very bright area which will um, try to blend with the brush later on so using my small little brush just trying to create all these patterns that you're seeing right now and it is a very satisfying kind of a feeling to have all these things coming together as you see all these patterns and all this sunlight forming all these very nice kind of patterns onto um, this surface right here and using that small brush i'm just trying to combine all these browns and all these orange and all these you know different kinds of uh, colors together and right now we can use um, this larger brush to kind of like do some of the areas that are pretty easy to paint on like this shadow area of the man's hand that is now cast onto the bright area of the um, surface itself right so you can see the shadow of the hand and again that the shadow is not completely dark we can see that um, the transparent nature of the watercolor right there and we can kind of like see through that layer of shadow onto the man's kind of uh, trousers or pants and that is a very very nice kind of effect Right, so now moving on to the painting of the uh, pocket area using that small little brush. Again, making sure that the bottom part is lighter than the top part. And just using my small little brush to help me with the painting of all these, you know, like browns and orange parts. And just very quickly try to finish up this area using my brush. And now I'm using browns for the arms and leaving white. You know, just left white for the areas underneath the sunlight. Right, so I just used some dark brown for the top of, of the arm. And again, right here, we want to use different browns and different colors for the skin tones. And you can see right there, I'm actually using some blues. And it doesn't really make sense to use blues for the skin tones, but because of the effect of the sunlight, the blues are actually the kind of like reflection of the sunlight onto the man's skin. And so we have a little bit of, uh, we have a tint of blue at the top, and this is being combined very nicely with the dark browns. 
And so the dark brown will combine uh, with this orange kind of brown, which is a lighter brown, and more towards the yellow. And again, we want to use different browns for the uh, man's uh, forearm right here. And so trying to darken the brown right there, just trying to adjust the tone and using a very light kind of brown for the bottom part. And so you can see right here, we have like three different areas of browns, you know, on this single um, area of the man's hand, uh, this man's uh, forearm. And so we have all these, you know, different kinds of uh, darks and uh, lights and orange. And this is something that is very nice to look at as well when you see all these gradation of tones on that single um, object that we are trying to paint. And so trying to make sure that we have, you know, all these colors in place and all these, you know, tones. And again, using a very light tint of blue right at the end, just below on the bottom part of that forearm. And again, you know, trying to make it as lifelike as possible. And you can see right now that the arm here is actually forming very nicely with all these different tones of brown. And using my um, brush, just trying to make sure that everything is in place and just trying to move on to the painting of the fingers and a man's hand right here. So leaving white those areas that are the fingernails and painting it later. So again, using different tones of brown for the fingers. And you can see right now that we have used many different techniques to depict all these different areas like, you know, um, the trousers, the, the skin tones, and of course, um, the different um, areas where we have the floors, we have the patterns on the floor and so on and so forth. And so that is actually giving us all these very nice visual effects and trying to darken the um, top part of the fingers right now. And so when we observe very carefully what we see in the, in the original photo, that will give us some very good ideas as to how we can apply the watercolor and to be able to achieve all these amazing effects using watercolor by in terms of blending, in terms of color matching, in terms of different dry brush techniques. And again, you can see on the hand right there, on the right hand side, um, some parts are left white because of the sunlight. And that is actually actually giving us a very nice visual result when we have all these you know brown tones that are surrounding all those light areas that is being depicted by leaving white. And that will show us that the sunlight is actually shining on those areas and just trying to finish up the fingers right there using my small little brush. And we have come to the end of this presentation. Hey everyone, it's KY Tom here. Thank you for watching my video. If you enjoyed my video, please hit the like button and comment down below. Do consider to subscribe to my channel for more art videos. Check out the links on the description below to find out more about my art and I hope to see you in the next one.